Friday at Pizza Flicks. Saddle up for a brutal tale of revenge by one of my favorite directors, Richard C. Serafian, in his big screen debut. Highlights of his versatile career include the early 70s films, Vanishing Point, Man in the Wilderness, Lolly Madonna XXX, and The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. is a true story. It took place a long while ago when Arkansas was just a part of the wild American frontier. They say knowing how to die is a trait very few men have. Twenty-year-old Manuel Avila seemed to be one of those rare few who knew how to die. He wouldn't plead and he wouldn't cry. He wouldn't let the American townsfolk think he wasn't brave. The men who had taken the law into their own hands seemed grim, nervous, uneasy. By a quirk of fate, my son Johnny happened to be hunting in the woods when he saw what was about to take place. To a boy like Johnny, this was wrong. Even though Manuel had been accused of stealing a calf from one of the local herds, the boy was still entitled to a fair and proper trial. The thinking of a mob is different from the thinking of an individual. And when the town of Black Falls chose me to be their sheriff, I warned them I would tolerate no lynch law. All the while my son raced toward my headquarters, he thought about what I had always drummed into his head. Cruelty must never replace reason. The Mexican boy, Manuel, was a boy Johnny's own age. A boy he had once played with when they were both kids. When Johnny reached me, he didn't have to say too much. A man had the right of trial. But Manuel seemed almost too calm, as if he knew that help was on the way. Not from me, but from his own father and two brothers. Manuel's father, Juan Avila, was an outsider, one of the despised members of the community. This was one of those moments when I realized how precious time can be. Life and death can be separated by just one second. I think Juan Avila realized this too. He wasn't about to sit still and allow his own boy to be murdered in cold blood. When I got there, I thanked my stars. Manuel was still alive. I must do all I could to save him, at least from the law of the jungle.
Kill him, Cal, kill him. He and his boys better rust than our cattle. Don't be a fool. You'll get tried legal. I see your trials. I promise you, I'm the law. You're out of the law! No, Pa. Move off, Johnny. Get out of here, Tyler, and take your men with you. Out of such dark and evil ways does violence erupt in a town. The passions of men, blinded by hatred, had been invoked to cause a tragedy. It would not stop here. This was but the beginning. Hate isn't born in a man. You learn how to hate through thoughtlessness and hunger. Abila had gone to a doctor who attended to his wounded hand. When his wound healed, he visited the grave of his son. Now, Abila was ready to hate with all the bitterness a man could have inside of him. Your mother died to give you life. When a desert flower dies, another takes its place. It is the way of God. Now he has taken you. But where are your children? Where are your flowers? These weeds? If this is the way of God, So grief had given way to hate, and hate had turned into revenge. We had created Avila, we the townsfolk. We had reviled him, scorned him, and despised him. We made him the animal he became. Hate can not only kill a man, it can kill a town. And Juan Avila was out to do just that. Avilar was considerate enough to give us warning. Johnny had been the first to see it. Naturally, it worried him, but I decided to treat this day like any ordinary day. Even if the entire town had lost their heads, I wasn't going to lose mine. Go on, sit down. I got some coffee. Go on, there's some cheese and bread in the cupboard. No, thanks. It's it kind of cold late in the afternoon, even, even in the spring. Chill kind of gets to you. At the beginning of every winter, your ma used to make me a pair of knit gloves nice and warm. She even lined the outside of one finger with leather, just in case. She had good hands, your ma. You know how many times I've heard that story? Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny. I, I didn't realize you used to like to hear about your ma. I'm tired of hearing about the past. I got memories. They're important to me. Memories. You don't win a gunfight with a memory. What about now? What about this? I didn't sleep. I haven't had much sleep lately. Sure. Because you've lost your edge. You're so sick from worrying about it, it's killing you. Quiet, boy. Look, I've done a good job this year. This town owes you a lot. They owe me nothing. You think you're ready to handle this job. I don't think you're tall enough. I got a lot of lead scratching at my insides. I can take that. But no man's going to tell me what to do or when to do it. You can have my star when I think you're ready. But until then, don't lean on me, Johnny. Don't lean on me. You don't understand. I didn't mean that. I know what you mean. I don't think you do. Johnny. A war was about to begin, 
and I was the only general the town had. I knew it would spread like a plague of fear. People began losing their tempers, their sense of balance. They would get irritated over little things, over nothing really. All you had to do was cross the street and somebody was bound to get mad at you. Look at the old goat. You'd think he was expecting a noon stage to trample him to death. By the time he gets here, it probably will. Where are you going? I need you here, Sam. I can't take care of the place by myself. Even if you only waited on him or straightened things up. Or... I need you. I'm tired of watching do all the heavy work, that's all. Besides, one drink ain't hurt me up to now. It ain't gonna hurt me today. Wait a minute. I'll go with you. That's the way it was. Sam Hanks, who ran the general store, and Squint Edwards, his friend, who were not really drinking men, found it necessary to go to the town saloon. They just couldn't sit around in the general store and act like nothing much was going on. As a matter of fact, a lot of others felt the same way. And suddenly, from the edge of town, there came Avila and his sons, calm and defiant, as though they were riding to a picnic. Avila had said, today was the day, and he was keeping his word. I could have planted riflemen in several places all over town. We could have picked Avila and his boys off but I couldn't live with myself if I had. I wanted to settle it in a decent, civilized way. If we were to kill Avila and his sons, there would be an uprising of his people. Our whole town would be open to raids at night. Our people massacred in their sleep. Our town burned to the ground. No, I didn't want to start the war. Let Avila start it. My strategy was to stop it. And as I watched him from my office, I remembered a phrase from the Bible which said, revenge is given only to God. I reasoned, therefore, that a man doesn't have this right. Leave it set, Crowley. No, no, no. We pay for it. We pay. Pay him, Carlos. I have no money, Papa. Tito? No, Papa. We don't have no money? We owe you. There's a horse trough outside, Mexicans. Take it easy, kid. He's very funny. A horse drop. You hear what he say, Carlos? He's very funny, eh? <laughs> Drink that. I do not think that is so funny, senor. You the law? Somebody get the sheriff. I'll handle this. You are going to handle what? How are you going to handle? Senor, I have in my hand under my hat a little gun which I have pointed at your belly. 
So I think you better sit down and play with your friends. Mister, you're black. And a black man don't tell me what to do. Let me kill him, Papa. Put up your hands, Carlos. Pinto, put up your hands. You too. No. No, not me, senor. I have the gun. How old are you? I don't do nothing to you. He does a bad thing. He wants me to drink from the floor. No, senor. Wait. Wait. Get your sheriff. Tell him his good friend Juan Avila is here. I wait for him. killed. You better wait for your paw. They want to see cow. Of them, Cal. Mexicans. They killed Billy. That had to happen sooner or later. They uh, sent me to get you. Go find Johnny. He's already gone in there. I warned him, Cal. I told him to wait for you. All right, get out. You going in there? No. Nope. Well, what are you going to do? Wait. They come a long way to gun me. They'll come a little farther. Oh. You, Papa. Gracias, Quinto. You are a good son. How you like me, huh? Don't tell your boys to drop their guns. Stay back, both of you. I said, drop your guns. Who are you? I call for the sheriff. Watch it, Johnny. He's a snake. Johnny? Oh, the little one. Where is your papa, Johnny? Outside? That's right, Avila. I will not kill a boy. I come to talk to your papa. Do as I tell you. I'll kill your papa. No, Johnny. My children, they need me. Sheriff, I am waiting for you. I had heard the shooting. Somebody had been killed or wounded. Who? If Avila killed me, he would kill the rest. I must stay alive. Papa. Papa. A 
It will be all right, Kinto. It will be all right. I... No. Wake up, my Kinto. Listen to me. Wake up, Kinto. Papa. He's dead. I still have my Carlos. I have watched two of my sons die. Each time, I have died with them. For one cattle, they hang him. For food, no one will give us, will let us work for. You people take away my land. The land that I work for. Land that has the blood of my father and the blood of his father. And you drive us away without food, without milk for the babies. And in the night, in the night I hear the babies cry. And I cry with them. Now you have killed my babies. Now you will pay for it. Why, you lion thief. You never owned anything in your life except what your baby stole for you. You careful. One of them even hung for you. I come to save him! Yeah, you were there all right. But to save his life or to make sure he didn't tell where the cattle went. To save him! You killed him! No! When you fired that shot, you bolted the horse right out from under him. There was a rope around his neck. Tal was there to save him. He was going to cut him down, give him a fair trial. No. No, he lies. He lies. You murdered him, Avalia. You murdered your own boy. like. You are lucky, Johnny. They may not have to cut off your hand like they did mine. Look. Look what he did to me. What's the matter, Johnny? They cut it off. The hand he shot to save my arm, they cut it off. <laughs> he make a woman of me. He put me in prison with this to remind me of the man who make me half a man. A bandit. A big cattle thief, huh? Who cannot hold a gun 
in his right hand. Go to the door. What's the matter, Johnny? What keeps him? He's out of town. You lie, Johnny. The situation, she changed around a little bit, huh? Now your papa must come to save you. You think he will? He's not here. He knows I am here, he will come. But I make sure. There are eight of you. For every 10 minutes I wait for the sheriff, I kill one of you. You, you, Johnny, I say for the last. There could be no going back now. The war had begun. I knew the town would call me a coward. Let them. I must stand my ground. I must meet Avila at my time, under my conditions. In that way, we might stand a chance. Uh, Cal. Get it over with. Me. And get out of here. Well, it's not me, Cal. It's the woman, Mrs. Hanks and Mrs. Elliot. They just want to know what you got planned. It's the women that are worried, huh? We're all with you, Cal. We thought maybe we could help. Oh. I don't know. I can't wield a gun like you, but I can handle a rifle. Maybe if I got behind the barn across from the saloon, I... You can't even see. Oh, sure I can. With these. Thanks, Hugh, but there ain't anybody in this town that can help me. Maybe I could ride out and round up some boys. How many men do you think you could round up in an hour's time? I, I don't know. But I could try. Closest ranch around here is Tyler's place. It'd take you a half hour to get out there. And the most you could bring back would be five men, if you could find that many. No, oh, let me handle it. I sundown every cow hand within 10 miles of here. Be riding into town looking to get drunk. Avila knows that, and he'll be here before then. Well, I guess you're right. Won't do any good to walk in there. Can't tell how many get killed. Ain't that right, Cal? That's right. I'll go tell the women. You do that. These were simple townsfolk, people of the soil, not gunfighters. Peace was their way of life. They relied on the law to punish wrongdoers, and they didn't know how to deal with this gunman, a man turned savage. They had to trust me. Their alternative was total massacre. In the general store where the women folk had gathered, anxiety turned to panic. What did he say? What's he gonna do? He knows what he's doing, Sally. It'll be all right. What'd you expect him to do? Walk right in there and shoot all three of them? With all that lead flying about, you can't tell how many would get killed. Now, the way we figures it, by sundown, cowhands from 20 miles around will be coming in town to get drunk. We'll have them outnumbered 100 to 1. Anyone drinking in that? Evil place ought to be shot. Oh, shut up, Mama. You'll be all right, Mrs. Hanks. Dad's in there, and he'll take care of him. What's the doctor doing in the saloon in the first place? Should be out taking care of the working man. My Hiram's little, but he's healthy. Uh, Mrs. Elliot, please. I've got a husband in there, too, and I'm glad he's healthy. Is there anything wrong with that? Don't worry, Ma. John ain't shoot better than anybody. They'll kill them all. You wait and see. Of course, Ken. Nobody's gonna hurt you, Pa. And nobody's gonna hurt Johnny. Then why are they all still in there? Why hasn't Johnny come out? Please, Mrs. Elliot, you're not helping matters. We have to face the truth. The truth is they're all still in there. Half of them might well be dead. We don't know. But there's trouble in there, or they would have been out long ago. We might as well face it. We gotta trust Cal. They came this far to gun him. And he's waiting for him. He'll get him out of there. 
You'll see. Time moves ever so slowly when you're counting seconds. And each second brings you closer to death. I couldn't help wondering whose torture was greater, theirs in the saloon or mine in my office. Had I made the right decision? A kind of quiet terror came over the men. Avila had won the opening round. Would he win the second? He ain't out of town. Is he, Johnny? No. I could. Hey, you, doctor. Too much conversation. I let you pick out the first one, the strongest or the bravest, or maybe somebody you don't like. Will you make it quick? You have three minutes. All right, pick out someone I don't like. Go on. Move! Hanks. What do you suggest, Doc? Well, we just have to stall him till Cal gets here. No, I... I have no part in this thing. I want that understood. What you men decide is up to yourselves. Just leave me out of it. Let's rush him. There's eight of us. Not the way I see it. You can't overpower him. He just can't. Uh, even if Hanks had a strong heart and Johnny wasn't wounded and Charlie were sober. You're just yellow, Rankin. Now, oh, hold on. There's no sense in arguing. We got to figure out something together. Yeah, we're together, Kemper. Right now we are. Maybe we can buy him. Yeah, let's make him sheriff, pay him $30 a month. I've got some money, $800. Maybe we can make a deal. That's what we'll do. We'll buy him off. I'd rather see him dead. Suppose Cal ain't here. Johnny said he was out of town. Is he? No. Well, then, that settles it. Mr. Avila! They pick you? No. We have some... some money. Five hundred. If you'll let us go. <laughs> Money. I do not need money. I do not want money. What I want, I take. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Eight thousand. Hidden in your rich homes, there must be eight thousand. That's all we have. Is that all your lives are worth? A hundred dollars apiece? We can get more. My friend, I do not want your money. Well, there must be something. Yes. Yes, there is something. Self-respect. Dignity. Can I buy this with your money? Will it bring life back in my sons? Will it grow a new hand? We, we have nothing to do with that. Sit down, Elliot. You keep out of this. You see, my friends, I am a very rich man. I have this, and I have time. And you have only one more minute. You, bartender, get me a drink. Be serious. You can't just kill us. Why not? Well, it's, it's not fair. Fair? What is fair? What do y'all lost me to me? Hey, where's my drink?
We make one. Papa, don't. You place me in a very difficult position, senor. You want me to turn my back to you? fellow townsmen were being murdered one by one, all because of Abelard's twisted idea of revenge and because of my decision to outweigh him. I knew that this would just about tear the morale of this town to bits, but I had to hold my ground. You have ten more minutes. My people were about to crack under the strain. How could I stop it? Where do you think you're going? Out. This ain't no place for you to be. Now go back to your ma. Go on, I'll scat. I just came to see how he's doing, Cal. Your ma all right? I guess so. You think Paul's gonna die? No, I don't think he is. He's got a sick heart, you know. Your pa's gonna be fine, Ken. They're all afraid in there. Well. That's only natural to be afraid. Now you run along to your ma and, and you take good care of her, see? You're not afraid, are you, Cal? No, I ain't afraid. How do you feel, Johnny? Not so good, huh? You think you're gonna get out of this alive, Avila? Maybe, maybe not. What's the difference? <sighs> this is going to be one big day in the life of Juan Avila. Maybe they write books about me, huh? Juan Avila. Maybe. You mean you want to die? Why not? What is there to be afraid of? Dying is easy. Living is hard. And Carlos? Carlos? He is going to hang someday anyway. But I give him something to die for. His papa. <laughs> Everyone should have someone to die for. And you, Avila? Who are you going to die for? I die for all of you, for this town, and other towns like you. Do not look so sad, all of you. Everything is going to be all right. Your sheriff will come, and he will save you. And you'll dig for me a nice grave somewhere on the hill outside. 
But meanwhile, you pick someone up. You have three more minutes. Decide. Keep your hands off me. Here we go again. All right, all right. Well, Crown is dead. But after all, it's mostly his own fault. It didn't look to me as though he really wanted to kill him. He tricked him. He planted that gun back there. He's right. But how do you know? How do you figure he got the gun? We've got to pick someone. That's all there is to it. Why don't we pick him? Who'd miss him? Who'd miss you? High card. What for? High card's his man. I have no part in this. Sit down. High card's his man. Okay, Doc. Well, well yes, I, I guess so. Kemper. You stay out of this, Sam. You want to take his place, Kemper? I'll give you a chance. Over there. I'll give you a gun. You walk across the street. When you get to the other side, you shoot me or I shoot you. Good luck. Is that loaded, Avila? I think there's men staked out in the street. Maybe if you stood in front and called out to him, let him know you're waiting for him. Why can't you just go in? Because I'd get killed, and they'd still be in there. You've got to face them sooner or later, Sheriff. So what's the difference? None for me. But while I'm at the end of town drawing lead, your husband will be safe out of there. And Hanks. And maybe Johnny. Yes, maybe, Johnny. You made a mistake going in there, Sally. Mistake? He told me about you. He told me. What, Sally? That I'm getting old, that I'm losing my edge? Well, maybe. And maybe he thought he was saving me. Well, has he? 
He was a fool to think he could handle it alone. Together, it might have been different. But it's too late. And now he's just another man in that saloon. He loved you. He felt sorry for me. That's his mistake, Sally. He's right, you know. Sure, he's right. Right! Sally, please don't, please! Matt, stop her! Go ahead! Get them all killed! Get them all killed! <laughs> Papa, a woman. Sit down. A flower. In this stinking town, there is one flower. She has courage, Johnny. She comes in the front door, you come in the back. No bullets, Papa. Search her. Go on, search her. I don't have a gun. You'll have to believe me. I should have brought one, but I didn't think of it. Why should I believe you? I swear it. Turn around. All right. Pick it up a little. everybody doing? Where's Cal? He's waiting. Waiting for them. Wait? But that's ridiculous. What kind of plans are they making? What's everyone doing? Nothing. What can they do, Doc? Not they. Cal. Surely he's got a plan. Look, he's not coming in here. What? What's he talking about, Sally? That's right, Daddy. But don't you know what's happening here? He knows, but I don't know. He just... But he's killing us off one by one every ten minutes until Cal shows. Well, he ain't going to, Doc. He's been one gunfight too many. That's all there is to it. What do you mean he's... Oh, what do you know about it? Why, why, why he's a young man. He's... He, he's younger than I am. Oh, you're nothing but a boy, Johnny. You, you, you know your father like I do. He'll be here. I gotta let you go. 
you don't, I shoot you right now, huh? What do you mean by that? Well, it's not my idea. Elliot, how long have you lived in this town? Twenty years. Well, why have you stayed? What do you mean? Did you got any friends in this town? Leave me alone, Kemper. all right, Johnny? I don't know. I don't know what to do, Sally. I've never been this scared in my life. I know I've got to do something, but what? With a gun, it's easy. It's, it's a question of being faster. This, this is different. I'm not smart enough. Sheriff is asleep. We make some noise to wake him up, huh? This time I pick. Tell me something, Kemper. Why is he saving Johnny last? Well, he killed his son. Yeah, but why last? Why not first? Oh, he seems to enjoy prolonging it. Exactly. But just suppose Johnny wasn't here. You think he'd be killing us? I don't know. How's your shoulder, Johnny? It's OK. Yeah. It was mighty impressive the way you jumped in on the kid before. Miss Kemper, if you don't mind. Uh, go ahead. Well, here's the way I see it, Johnny. He's having fun getting rid of us, and you're his audience. Now, without an audience... What are you getting at, Rankin? Simple. Just that I'm asking you to... To get killed. Well, yeah, I guess you could put it that way. No, hold on, Rankin. Dad! <laughs>
It's all right. He's coming. Better get inside, Mrs. Hank. Paul's lying in there on the floor. to walk down the street. Some animals live for a hundred years. Why? Three more minutes. Look so unhappy. Three minutes is a long time, eh, Doctor? How long did it take for the sick one to die? Three minutes? A minute? To him, it was a lifetime. I'm sorry, Ken. Are you blaming me? You were sick. Would you like some coffee? Here, you come sit over here. I'll fix you some. Johnny's all right.
for all coming here to talk to you, gal. You all lost your minds? Get off the street. Go on, Matt. Hanks is dead. I know. What are you waiting for, Sheriff? We can't wait for those Mexicans to come out of there. Six shots. I counted them. Your own boys in there. Would help if we could, but we ain't gunmen. Ain't our fight. Please, Cal. You've got to end this. All right. Get off the street. It's... It's not that we don't sympathize with your position, Sheriff. I understand, Mrs. Elliott. Now, please get back in the store. Come on, Ken. You go on. I'll get him. Look, Cal, if I could, I'd... Sure, Matt. I understand. You go with him, boy. You see, Cal, she figures their quarrel is with you. And, and, and even if you are unlucky, I, I mean, that would end it. He has no hand, Cal. Who, Ken? There's only two of them, not three. That gives us a chance, don't it? Don't it? A child's insinuation had cut deep inside me, like a knife. Sometimes a man must kill so that others might live. The time had come, at last, for me to make my move. Will you please stop that? We only had a gun. What would you do with it? Well, you can't be serious. I'm serious. Well, I... What? Well, I suppose they could get them when their backs are turned. Oh, come on, Kemper. We know each other. You wouldn't take a chance like that. Suppose you got nervous and missed. Look here, Rankin. What have you got against me? There ain't nothing wrong with a man wanting to stay alive. No. No, I suppose there isn't. Just a friendly visit. How are you with your left, Johnny? Okay. What do you want me to do, Rankin? Throw myself at him? Maybe get in a few punches before they kill me? I mean with a gun. Why? Well, just raise your eyes a little bit over to where Charlie's sitting. You can see it. Sticking out of his belt. all yours. Oh, one thing. I first seen it when he drugged Charlie over to the table. So the odds are 50-50. It ain't loaded.
I've never killed anyone in my life. In my whole life, I have never killed anyone! See? You did not kill me. Why? Move off, Johnny. over the way it had begun, in death. Those who were alive might look at me with bitterness. Perhaps somebody would understand. In time, maybe, we could forget the horror of what we had been through. A man becomes what people make him become. Avila died because my people didn't understand him, and they didn't try. His need to love and be loved had never been fulfilled. Avila and my people had gotten to know one another, none of this could have happened. And when they talk about Avila in the future, they'll have to say, after all, he was a man, and we gave him agony, so he gave it back. I realized then that we'd better learn to get along with one another, otherwise there'd be another Avila. And as for me, I had done what I thought was right. No man could do any more.